We'll start our study of the next concept with something simple. Here on the right, I have a V versus T diagram, and I do have an initial position for the uh, X versus T diagram, so I should be able to construct it without much effort. I'll start at T equals 0 at 30. And then what about this signed area out to the second hour? Well, it's just a rectangle. It's 30 by 2. That means I go up 60 miles. So that should take me up to 90 after 2 hours. Right there. Okay, then what comes next? Now I have a somewhat taller and narrower rectangle. It's 40 by 1. That should take me up an additional 40 miles. So after 3 hours, I've gone 130. And hopefully these sorts of exercises have become second nature to you at this point. So now let's try a slightly different idea. Suppose, instead of being given an initial condition, namely that x of 0 is 30, I'm given something like this. Could I also reconstruct the x versus t curve if I didn't know this initial information? Well, we would start at t equals 2 hours. We'd calculate the area to go from 2 to 3. We'd find that it was a 40. And so, starting at this position at 90, we would add 40, we'd get 130. That's fine. What about this other point? Well, we have to go backwards in time. This other rectangle appears to have an area of 60, but we don't actually add 60 onto this position of 90 to get a point up here at 150, obviously. Why not? It's because we're going backwards in time. And so it's as if we started at some point and then added 60 on to get 90. What point would we have to have started from? We would have had to start from 30. So as you can see, we reconstruct the identical x versus t graph even though our so-called initial position was not at t equals 0. And in fact, we can show that this works in general. Namely, the idea of initial condition doesn't have to be at t equals 0. In fact, I can pick any point in the domain and specify that x as a function of that particular point and still re reconstruct the entire x versus t graph given the v versus t graph. But to do it systematically, we're going to need to be a little more careful about how we calculate signed area. So let's look at this idea of starting from an arbitrary point, meaning not when t equals 0, and what it entails. We've got, as usual, a V versus T diagram, but we're going to say that our initial condition is that we know the position at T equals 3. So let's start to construct the X of T versus T diagram. At X of 3, we start with 60. Now, we need to calculate both forwards as well as backwards to find x as a function of time for 0, 1, 2, and 4. Let's start with the forward direction. We know that initially, meaning at t equals 3, we're at uh, 60 miles. And so we need to compute the signed area starting at 3 and going to 4. Well, it's one this way, that's the width, and the height is negative 10. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10, so we add on that signed area of negative 10, that takes us here. Okay. Now we have to go backwards in time, and here's where the situation changes. What's really going on is the height is just what we've always said it is. The height for this calculation of signed area is, in fact, 40. 
but the width is different. And here's what's going on. The width, because we're going from 3 to 2, is negative 1 hour. See, all along, when we've been calculating signed area, we've been going in the forward direction. And we didn't give it much thought that we were multiplying by the positive number difference. But because we're going backwards, we're multiplying by a negative 1. And so the signed area here is actually negative 40. What does that mean? That means that we go down 40 if we go from the third hour to the second hour. Let's put that in. Think about it again. Suppose we had been going from the second to the third hour. Then we would have been going from two to three. The width would have been positive one. The height would have been 40 and we would have made an increase of 40 from 2 to 3. But we're going backwards. Our signed area is negative width times a positive height, and so it's a negative signed area. It depends on the direction that we're going. Let's do this final uh, two hours of calculations. So we're going from 2 to 1. We're going backwards that's a width of negative 1. The height is negative 20. Negative 1 times negative 20 is positive 20. So we add 20. And then finally, we're going backwards again from 1 to 0. That's negative 1 hours. Our height is positive 30. And so this is negative 30. So we go from 40 down to 10. Connecting it all up gives us this for the x versus t diagram. Again, let's just recap. When we're going forward from 3 to 4, forward in time, the width is a positive number. But when we're going backward in time, namely all of these situations, the width is a negative number. So let's redo the problem that we did at the end of the last lesson. Namely, we're going to go from acceleration to velocity all the way to calculating a position. But we're going to do it with these two new things that we've learned. Namely, we don't need to give initial velocity and initial position in terms of t equals zero. We can pick any time at all and that requires us to be more precise about how we understand signed area. Okay, so again we gave v0 previously but now we have v3 is 20 so we'll just start our diagram at 3 comma 20 and we have to compute signed area back to 2, 1, and 0. So the signed area, the width, is going to be negative 1. The height is going to be negative 20, so the signed area is 20. So we go up 20, from 20 up to 40. Now we continue. We need to go from 2 to 0. The signed area from 2 to 0, the direction, the width, is negative 2. The height is positive 10. Negative 2 times 10, that gives us a signed area of negative 20. Okay, let's connect those. Again, it goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway. Notice if we'd gone in the opposite direction, we would have said the signed area here was 20, and this one was negative 20. So signed area, again, depends on direction. Okay. Now we've got the velocity versus time curve, and that breaks up into two different trapezoids. So what is it that we need to calculate? Well, we're going to calculate both x of 3, and then just for fun, we're going to calculate x of 0. That way we can compare everything to the way we did it in the previous lesson. Okay, so to find x of 3, we'll start with x of 2. x of 3 is just x of 2 plus the signed area from 2 to 3. Okay, So what does that mean in terms of width? Well, that's positive 1. 
And this is a trapezoid, so we're going to calculate area as the average of the two heights, 1 half 40 plus 20. And then we'll multiply that by positive 1. It's going to give us 40 plus 20 is 60. Half of that is 30 times 1, 30. So that tells us that the signed area here, x of 2, that was 70. That's given. And the signed area from 2 to 3, that's 30. So x3 equals 100. Same result that we got before. And we can confirm that in a minute. While we're at it, though, let's go ahead and compute x of 0. So again, we follow this same procedure. x of 0 is x starting from the position that we know, x of 2 plus the signed area from 2 to 0. Okay, Our direction is negative, so this width is negative 2. We're going to, again, calculate a trapezoid area. And so we have one half the average of the two parallel sides, 20 plus 40. That one half, again, gives us the average. And then we multiply by the uh, distance between the two parallel sides, in this case, negative 2. Twos cancel. I've got negative 60. And so... We're going to say that x2 is 70, signed area here, negative 60, 70 minus 60, so I'm going to get a final x0 equal to uh, 10. Okay. Now, how does that compare to the way we did it last time? In fact, we get exactly the same results as we had last time. So let's recap. The key idea is that initial conditions don't have to be just given at t equals 0. We can give them for t equals any time. And then we have to work either forward or backward from that initial condition to recover the other parts of the graph. That leads to a key insight that we have not really understood up until now, and that is the signed area that we keep talking about depends on the direction in which you calculate it. And so the signed area in going from 2 to 3, where 2 and 3 are the time, perhaps that might be positive 30. The signed area, therefore, when we go from 3 to 2, is going to be negative 30. Because even though the height part of our calculation doesn't change, the width part goes from being positive to negative. Finally, that frees us up to give initial conditions for different times. So for example, we could be given the initial condition for the velocity at say t equals 3 and the initial condition for the position at say t equals 2 and still reconstruct the entire graph starting from the a versus t, building the v versus t graph, and then if need be, all the way to calculating the x versus t graph.